Okay, welcome to this video. So I will be showing you how to replace the paddle wheel in these Odin styled uh, Sidewinder speed loaders. This is a repro here that I got from eBay. Uh, Nearprol also make a version of this. It's probably exactly the same as the one you see here. So what you need is a is a screwdriver. This is a uh, just a Phillips, a really small one. And then also a 10 millimeter socket or maybe an adjustable spanner. So this is the original uh, paddle wheel that came with this speed loader. As you can see, the paddles themselves, these parts, which push the BBs are really quite thin. And in the case of this one, despite being uh, correctly calibrated, the clutch that is, um, they've sustained quite a bit of wear. So eventually they will probably st start slipping and you wouldn't be able to load magazines correctly. This is the one that I sell on eBay. As you can see, the paddles themselves are much thicker and meaning they should last quite a bit longer um, than compared to the uh, the stock um, version. So side by side, you should be able to see that the paddles themselves are quite a bit thicker and thus should last quite a bit longer. So if you've already reinstalled um, a, a replacement wheel, then skip ahead to the calibration part. But this part, I will tell you, I'll show you how to replace um, the wheel. So. I've already unscrewed or loosened these six screws on the top here. So I'm gonna put this to one side and then make sure that you put the door to one side here. Then there's three screws to remove this cover here. Now, the Odin, the official Odin Sidewinders are arguably high quality, although they are very expensive. So one of the things they've done, they've put brass threaded inserts where these screws go into, meaning um, you're unlikely to ruin the, uh, I guess, the female parts um, where, of, the, of the material which the screws go into. However, with these generic ones, you just have coarse threaded screws going directly into plastic. So if you over tighten the screws or if you repeatedly tighten and loosen them like I've done, there's a good chance there you'll ruin the plastic um, threads inside these parts here, meaning the screws no longer do anything or they don't come out, um, things like that. So be very careful when you're disassembling these generic reproductions because um, you, have you have screws going straight into plastic, which is a bad recipe if you're uh, continuously um, going in and out of your speed loader. So um, here we have the nozzle. There's a BB stuck in there, which is what you want to see really. Um, Oh, okay, there's a, uh, yeah, there is an O-ring that, um, that's on the end of the screwdriver, that lives inside of this nozzle, which stops BBs falling out. If your BBs are continuously falling out, maybe your O-ring has shrunk, then you may wanna um, put it in some thick silicon oil and massage it to try and get it to swell up. It's also worth cleaning this because lots of BB, BB residue tends to build up on this part here. So now we've opened up this side, you can see the paddle wheel, here it is. This um, one here is my first, one of my first prototypes, so it's black, um, but it's the same design as the other one where it's got thicker paddles. So now we go to the reverse side and we need to take apart the clutch. So to do that you need to hold the paddle wheel with one hand um, to stop it from spinning, and then you loosen the nut here. This nut comes off, it's a nylock 10 millimeter nut. And then you can start to take apart the uh, clutch mechanism. You have um, this handle wheel. There's a washer that goes on top and the washer goes this way around. So the bump, the bump is on the top here. Then you have the felt pad, which is the clutch itself, the clutch material, the friction material. Remove that without tearing it. There you go. So um, this is also a part that will likely need to be replaced at some point. So it's probably about one or two millimeter thick felt, uh, quite easily purchased online and then cut out to the correct shape and size. Then there's a metal plate that goes underneath. And then we have a flanged washer of sorts like this. And then we have the paddle wheel and the bolt. The bolt is quite unique. Um, it has on the thread it has two flat sides because these parts here are keyed, so they can only go on in one way. 
and it's quite a proprietary nut. I don't think you'd be able to find one of these from a generic hardware store, for example. So here is my um, one of my first prototypes of this replacement paddle wheel. I've been using this for well over a year, maybe a dozen game days, um, so quite a few times, and there's very, very limited wear on the uh, corners of the paddles themselves. There is a bit of wear um, where it starts to flatten out and got a bit polished, but compared to the original, these are so much more superior in terms of um, just durability, um, from what I can tell anyway. So at this point, you're ready to take your replacement. So let's say this is my replacement here. You put it on um, the bolt or the bolt through it, and then push it in to make sure that's flush. If you do purchase one of my replacements and you have a, a difficult time fitting the wheel onto the bolt, let me know because um, I've only tested my replacements um, with this generic reproduction. I haven't tried it with the uh, legit Odin's or the new Pro version. Um, so the bolt might be slightly different on, on those variants, might have slightly different tolerances. So if you do have a problem, let me know and I can, I can fix a problem for you and then send you a replacement. Um, although I'm quite confident that um, this bolt is probably the same on, on all the variants. Um, so you shouldn't run into any issues there. So that's now installed. So I'm gonna put it back inside here. At this point, it might be worth cleaning um, the wheel, making sure there's no um, there's there's no uh, BB residue. Might be worth putting a bit of silicon oil, thin silicon oil on the reverse of this, so it spins more freely. It's up to you. Flange nut goes in. Then we have our big steel disc, and it only goes in sort of one way. It, it kind of keys and um, slots onto the bolt. Then we have our felt friction material, the part of our clutch. Then we have the handle, uh, the handle wheel as I like to call it, and then we have this um, this washer here. Now, then you put on the nylock um, nut, and if this wears out, you can, this is, this, is a, this is a generic part, so you should be able to get a replacement. Just put that on finger tight for now, until you start feeling resistance, leave it like that. Flip it over, and then it's just a reverse of everything else. Nozzle with O-ring goes in this slot here. Then this part is always worth having a look at the underside. Yeah, so there's a bit of BB residue there, so I'm just gonna wipe that off with my finger. Actually, no, I've got a cotton swab to hand. I'm just gonna quickly give that a little brush. And um, you might wanna clean this properly with some isopropyl alcohol, but um, I'm just doing this quickly for the video. So, in it goes. I've still got the three screws and then I will tighten them up. Make sure that's all seated and then tighten them up all the way but not hard because again it's plastic into it's well, you've got a metal screw going into plastic you don't need to do it up tight. Now the problem with that as well is that you can't get this shell very very tight because again you're going into plastic so sometimes when you're uh, at the end of a magazine you you almost filled it up um, some stress is built up and the the, the the clamshell can flex and come apart slightly which is a bit annoying which um, I guess you won't experience with the legit Odin because it has brass threaded inserts. So now I put the top in. Yeah, so do not forget to put in the door and it has a big lip there for your finger to catch it. So this part here needs to be uh, in the window like so. And then press that in, grab the screwdriver again and then tighten it um, in a crisscross pattern so it, it kind of tightens up evenly and be uh, cautious not to over tighten as like I keep saying you've got metal coarse thread screws going into a fairly soft plastic so be careful not to over tighten uh, I can't tell you how tight it needs to be I don't have a torque wrench or anything but um, just as it starts to get tight this is all, all you need to do. Okay now that is done now we move on to step two which is calibrating the clutch. 
So the first thing to do is to load up your speed loader with some BBs. I've just got some uh, generic 0.25 gram BBs lying around here that I'm going to use. Okay, close the lid. Now you want to grab one of your mid cap magazines that you plan on uh, using with your speed loader. Here I have a PTS EPM uh, magazine for recoil shock um, rifle, so the Tokyo Marui recoil shock. In case you didn't know, if you're using recoil shock magazines, they are different. So with uh, speed loaders like these, um, it does work, but you do have to push and hold the magazine up in there as it doesn't lock in place. So nothing happens uh, when you turn the wheel. So you need to take your uh, sockets or whatever you're going to use to tighten up this nut and you're going to tighten up a little bit, maybe quarter turn, half turn. And it's loading a few BBs, but it's mostly spinning. So you need to be a bit tighter, just a fraction of a turn. Okay, there we go. We're loading up quite a few BBs there, but from my experience, I know that that isn't 120 BBs. So it does need to be a tiny bit tighter. Okay, okay. I don't, I'm not convinced that it's full, so I'm gonna tighten it just a bit more. Okay, give it a little shake. Okay, so I'm not too sure how many BBs are in here, so what I'm going to do, take the magazine out, catch the BBs that fall out, then I'm going to grab my original universal mid-cap unloader, which I sell on my eBay page. These are another creation of mine, and I'm going to unload the magazine and sort of just take note of how many BBs come out. So that was quite a lot, but I think, I think it could take a, uh, a couple more. So if you wanted to calibrate this exactly to how many BBs um, your magazine takes, then you would empty the magazine like I just did, but you would count how many there are, uh, which is a bit of a tedious task, which I don't really do. But, um, and I also prefer to un um, underload my magazines so the spring lasts a bit longer and also encourages me to reload more when playing airsoft, which is, for me, is a part of the fun reloading. Oh, so yeah, some BBs just fell out there. Okay, great. So I'm gonna just um, I'm gonna use it normally now. So okay. Oh, I left the uh, top open then. So that is pretty good for me. I would say that is correctly calibrated now. It's it, that felt like it has loaded most of the magazine. Um, although I am going to push my luck a little bit because I know that these wheels are quite strong, these are replacement ones. So I'm just going to tighten it just a fraction more, just to try and get a few more BBs in there. Give it a bit of a shake so the BBs um, are seated properly inside the speed loader. And I'm going to give it a few more turns. And for me, I reckon that's enough. So I'm going to do the same thing where I unload the magazine and just take note of of how many come out it's hard to tell really because it comes out so quickly but um just going to have a little look here that seems like a fully loaded magazine to me so that's where i would leave it um i would rather have this under under loaded than um than than having this nut over tightened and uh, resulting in damage to the wheel so there you go. So that's roughly how you calibrate it. Uh, you may want to do it in a slightly different technique, depending on, on your preference of, of, of magazine, um, I guess, loading. Um, you may wish to count how many BBs load up as you're calibrating, um, as you're tightening the, the, the nut, as to ensure a consistent amount of BBs, but really it's up to you. Anyway, um, thanks a lot for watching, and also many, many thanks if you have purchased one of these. Um, please let me know, um, please give me feedback, let me know if there's any issues or if you like the product, um, feedback is, is, is really greatly appreciated. And I hope this um, video has been helpful and if you have any issues with this process or with the product just let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to help.